Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 and in this video I present the first draft of a Chang'e 5 Lunar Probe uh, Sample Return Mission. So that is this part, that's the Long March 5 rocket of course and according to Wikipedia it's supposed to be 8.2 tons I've got it at 7.46 right now and that's because I don't know where the rest of the mass comes from. Uh, I already increased the mass quite a lot uh, we have the Delta V's we need, and so I'm wondering what I'm missing. And so part of the reason that I'm presenting this first draft video is because I need more information and I don't see it, but it may A, be in a language that I don't know, or B, just be in a location I don't access. Um, so a few things. Uh, first of all, I've chosen to use UDMH and NTO. I don't know what propellant they actually use or what efficiency the engines have, the RCS thrusters or the engines on each stage. Uh, so, or the, the real dry mass and wet mass of each component. Uh, right now, the ascent module is 324 kilograms. Uh, Wikipedia gives around 500 kilograms, but it's it seems like just an estimate. Uh, I didn't go with the 500 kilograms because it then said that the lander is 1.2 tons, which is just obviously wrong if we need enough delta V to do the landing. So, um, yeah, if if you're gonna have a 500 kilogram ascent module, you're gonna need more than a 1.2 uh, ton. Uh, lander or even a 1.2 ton descent module you can see here we're probably uh, closer to 1.6 1.7 tons we've got way more margin that we need so the dry mass of this probably needs to be higher but it's not light it's 234 kilograms dry and 1.879 tons wet so and again UDMH NTO all the way to judge the volume of the tanks, I put little spheres inside this volume. I had to eyeball the size of it um, based on human figures that were working on it in various photos because there's no schematic of it. But I think that's probably close to right. And, but they could be larger, in which case that would explain why it's heavier. But you have to think that the sample return missions for the Luna program with the Soviet Union they were only 5.6 tons. They didn't carry quite as large a sample as this is planning to, but all in all, I mean, this is also a much more complicated circumstance with a whole orbital module that docks with and everything, which uh, increases efficiency. So it's, it's complicated. Uh, I would like to know the details that I do not have. Also, I'm aware that uh, there's all sorts of little fiddly bits that I have not included on this. So I, on future editions, if it makes it back, for instance, I'll, I'll perhaps improve upon it. Uh, it has extendable solar panels, and of course we're going to have to test everything here. I decided um, for now just to use a stock drill. Uh, so this is Chang'e 5 drill. Uh, this has ore cap uh, capacity, so as far as needing the arm to put it in, of course, it, it, you could make an arm with the robotic stuff, but in terms of how we actually get ore from the surface of things in Kerbal Space Program, you don't actually need to pick it up, so... Um, and you won't be able to. There's no physical manifestation of ore that you can use an arm to move it from the descent module to the ascent module. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's complicated. You can see little hooks up there to dock with the module at the bottom. I don't know how they actually dock them together, but I just decided to uh, put a hook and eye sort of thing. Anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, modified stock drills. I put two of them just for balance, and I reskilled them a little bit to make them extend the proper distance. But uh, those come with the mod, it'll just be a plus part and it'll create this new part from the stock part. Okay, so retract solar panel. I don't know if it works yet, but uh, then we have this bit and there's a fairing. And then there's the um, docking adapter for the asset module here. And then there's the uh, sample return capsule here with uh, ore capacity, obviously in a blader. What it doesn't have right now is RCS ports and I'll have to judge whether that's necessary or whether the 
orbital module is going to orient it first and then release it and then it just goes ballistic after that. Um, we, you can see there's a procedural decoupler here and that's because there was too many decoupler parts. Uh, when you think about it, this has to couple off, this capsule has to be decoupled and this fairing on top has to be decoupled. And this fairing has to decouple both from the lander and from the orbital module. So that's a whole lot of decoupling in a small area. And yeah, I decided to just throw an extra decoupler there uh, to handle the capsule since we've got so many things decoupling otherwise. Uh, the fairing uh, is like a stack separator. It'll separate off from both the lander and the orbital module simultaneously. And that's again to simplify things because we already have something else bracing here. It's a little node there that that has to go on to. I'll talk more about the engines once we're outside. But so this is the orbital module. I decided not to create new solar panels because these Gagayan solar panels that I made uh, were sufficient and they look good so and they fit uh, so I've, I've retained those and decided to use those instead of making new solar panels for uh, the orbital module of Chang'e 5. I th some images have the ascent stage having extendable solar panels some of them seem to just have static solar panels on the side I don't know which way it is um, if it's extendable solar panels I can change that so Anyway, uh, the thruster configuration probably needs to change, especially for the ascent module, which has to dock. Uh, I put sneakily uh, invisible RCS ports facing forward because I knew that. And so I did that in Unity. Unity, you tell where the RCS ports are. And I, so I added some forward facing ones because I didn't have that on the model and I realized that I needed it. Otherwise, I don't think things need uh, translational stuff. Um, uh, rotation on here might be problematic so we probably need a uh, port here and port here uh, with two ports on each of uh, two RCS thrusters on each side to do roll but uh, yep yeah, okay so that's what it looks like and that's its size I've only got one fairing size for the long march 5 according to what documents I saw so it's big <laughs> they probably use something a little bit smaller for this but we'll, we'll keep this and we need to see whether the Long March 5 as I have it uh, configured here is good for this particular launch and can get us to the moon. So let's do that first. Okay, so Wenchang is uh, at lower than an inc the inclination of lunar orbit. So we basically time by ascending and descending node instead of by relative inclination. And so we should be good to go. It's not the right date. We're that the delta v should be the same or relatively close either way. It's just a matter of transit time, as far as the date is concerned. But there's no food, water, and oxygen on this to manage, so it should be okay. So, throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. Hopefully, I've got this configured right. It's been a while since I launched Long March Five. Okay, we are correcting inclination. We should, probably should overdo it a little bit there. Now, the core stage has very little thrust to weight ratio. So after the boosters go, we've got a bit of a problem. Um, you can see 0.83. So it's not going to be the happiest sort of thing. But yeah, basically why I'm calling this first draft is because I made up a whole lot of numbers and I'm nervous about that, so... Uh, the numbers should work. Uh, it's possible to build a lunar probe with these numbers, definitely. It's possible for the Chinese to build a lunar probe with these numbers, but I don't know if they're the right numbers. So... That's where we're at. Okay, booster set. And the core still has 5 minutes and 45 seconds left. But we can probably flatten out now. Okay, fairing set. And off the fairings go just as we get into space. Okay, 
That's the end of the core stage, separation, and ignition. Uh, uh, somebody shared photos and it doesn't quite look like this. I haven't fixed that yet. Uh, probably a low priority compared to some of the other things I want to do, like making the actual lander. Uh, so, yep. For now, this will be how it is. And we are right on on inclination as far as the moon. We can pitch up a bit. But we, I want it to fall back down a bit because we're somewhat high to give time for the stages. And we should have enough to transfer the moon. And yeah, it looks like uh, 8.2 tons is definitely doable. I didn't have uh, RCS built into this stage yet. So I've got the stock RCS, well, stock as modified by realism overhaul RCS ports and snuck some extra hydrazine tanks in. I'm not going to get into circular. This is sufficient. 262 by 190. And we have the 3,600 left, which is way more than enough. So, transfer time. So, it looks like I'm going to have to make it heavier. And review how exactly to best manage that. But having the correct numbers would be awesome. <laughs> I mean, I'm just... Throwing wild guesses based on the total mass and what each stage needs to do its job. So. Okay, ignition. So off we go. So far, so good. Okay, final phase of transfer. We're a little bit off as far as timing is concerned, but that should be still fine as far as getting us a lunar trajectory. Okay, and we'll do the rest of RCS. We could totally pick which side we want to go on at this point. Um, yep, unfortunately the side that they landed on, which is the far side, is in nighttime, so this is probably not the right time of month to be transferring to the moon for the location that they actually landed in. But anyway, uh, on we go. Uh, we'll probably have to make further corrections because separation is going to impart some impulse on us. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and separate and extend solar panels and I will activate the orbital module so that it can maintain our attitude. Oh, I, I put some fake thrusters at the top because <laughs> uh, I knew that might be necessary. All right, I'll have to put the physical manifestation of those later on. We're on sort of a crash course. We'll... You know what? Let's just go on the other side. <laughs> it's easier. Okay. Alright. On our way. Um, some images had six tanks at the bottom here. Some had four. I went with four. Because that seemed to be what it looked like from one photo. But... It's a toss-up. The orbital engine is actually currently identical to the descent lander engine because I didn't see why they would make two different engines when the same one would do just fine for both purposes. But uh, that could be different depending if they happen to have something more efficient for the orbital one or something. I did not put parachutes on the return capsule. So that's something I forgot. Yeah. I didn't build, I didn't, I wasn't intending to create parachutes, that's gotta be a real shoots thing. So, yeah. Possibly the upper stage would just be sent on a crash course to the moon, or maybe a, a flyby to interplanetary space, I'm not sure. Okay, we are in Lunar SOI, and that's a fine periapsis to start off with. It'd be really funny if, uh, by some magic, I don't think it's I don't think it's possible, but 
the upper stage flew by in this direction and the lander flies in this direction and we crash into each other. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, because uh, our inclination, you see here, this actually crosses above that. So it would be really tough to get those doing the same thing at all. It's a little bit plain on top here, I know. It's got a automatic docking port and if we get to testing that out, that might be interesting. So a built-in docking port for this. Otherwise, uh, the part that has the docking port here, assuming it works, is this uh, ascent stage docking adapter. But that also has, that has both a docking port and a decoupler, and I have no idea if that works or not. I've, I haven't seen a part that has both a decoupler and a docking port on it, so that might actually be a do not do thing for all I know. Okay, uh, settling fuel down and ignition. Well, the plume is okay. Again, not the world's most wonderful acceleration here. It's a 7 kilonewton thrust engine, same for the lander. But the lander has a whole lot less to deal with than the orbital module. As you can see, uh, we'll have more than enough in the ascent mod, uh, sorry, the orbital module to transfer back. It's going to be no problem at all. We could bring the whole thing back if it wanted to. So the dry mass is probably much more than it is right now. Okay, it looks like I started a little bit early, so I might cut this into two burns. I don't think I set any ignition... Oh, wait, ignition zero? Uh-oh. Well, looks like I made a little bit of a mistake there. Okay, so we need more ignitions on these engines. I only set them to ignition of limit of one. That's gonna complicate matters. Yep, they all have one ignition. Hmm. I'm using RCS to try and slow us down here. That wasn't friendly of me. I'm gonna give all the engines five ignitions. Okay, well, trying to bring it down with the RCS is too tedious. So, what we're gonna do is see if we can land with this high trajectory. That's gonna be dodgy, but it'll be a more interesting challenge. And again, I seem to have too much delta V anyway. So, yep. And then the ascent module might have to rendezvous with this. But then this, we can't bring it back anyway, because this doesn't have another ignition. So, we've already botched part of this. We will try to do the landing, and then we'll see if that much works. There's the moon, but we're really high right now. Uh, so landing gear is actually action grouped. I've got a nice little animation. They're individual pieces instead of... Normally, previously I'd built it into the lander, but I think I'll stop doing that. Uh, so I made it just one... Uh, it's just one part and then four-way symmetry. Sometimes the landers don't allow for that because they're not symmetrically placed around the body. Um, so, but in this case, it's fine. So, all right, um, yeah, we'll just let go of the lander now, I think. So we'll see if this fairing part works as far as being a stack separator separating from both sides. Seems like it. Okay, that was pretty clean, actually. I like that. Okay, uh, let's verify that we still have control over this part. And so uh, let's turn normal. Oh, that might be a little bit. Uh... Oh, I knocked it. Okay. But yes, we do have control over this part. And uh, that'll be sun up. Yep, okay. So it's solar panels to do its thing. A little bit of debris that probably should be placed suborbital and crashed into the surface. The orbital module can always bring its periapsis back up again afterwards. 
Okay, so now we have the lander. <laughs> Here we go. And we're just gonna do a direct landing because we only have one ignition with the decent engine. We've got throttling on it. I decided that it would be able to throttle, again, I don't know, uh, but I decided to be able to throttle to 20%. That seemed a modest assumption. I don't know exactly where we're landing right now, but we'll just give it a go. It'll be at nighttime, which is sort of sad too, but... We've got lots of Delta V, as you can see. Again, it's only supposed to be a 1.2 ton lander, it said on Wiki. I mean, what can I do? Um, and even if they were just talking about the descent part and the ascent part being 500 kilograms, it's 1.7 tons. But then, if it's only 1.7 tons, why the heck have such a huge orbital module? I mean, the orbital module we have right now could easily bring it into a tight orbit with the moon and transfer back. Uh, so, yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> so, uh, I accounted for all the structure on it. It's not that complicated. I mean, this has, the fun functionally speaking, this has a whole bunch of stuff that the orbital module also has to have, like batteries and... Uh, avionics and stuff like that. All, all the modules have to have batteries, avionics, propulsion, the tanks, the RCS, everything has that. This has the additional landing legs. Everything has solar panels. So in terms of mass fraction, you would expect each proportion, uh, each, each bit to be about the same. Um, I It seems like all the modules, including the asset module, have the ability to transmit back uh, to Earth, though maybe they're relaying off of the orbital module, but the antenna is not that heavy. So, I mean, it's not going to account for a huge amount of the mass. So, yeah, I don't know where they're sneak uh, sneaking in the extra mass on the orbital module, if that's where it is. This is already heavier than we thought it was going to be, so... Hmm. But, yeah, only one shot on this. Let's see, 11 minutes stage time there. Suicide burn countdown is coming down real fast, <laughs> so maybe it's good that I started. I've got extra Delta V, so that's good. Um, hmm, this needs to be moved down, huh? Okay, I think we're gonna need to throttle down. They picked a nice flat spot for it. I obviously have not. The engine thrust was based on exactly what we would need to land safely. So, I don't know what the thrust of land, uh, Lander's engines actually are, but this seemed like a good number. I was okay with landing with this amount of thrust and this amount of throttling. Even with a single ignition, as you can see, it makes for a fairly smooth experience. I say that before I've actually touched down, which is probably a bad thing to do, but... Oh, I don't want to hover sideways. I don't want to hover sideways. No. Go down. Oh, okay. We're on the ground. That was awkward. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Alright, so let's try and get our sample with these drills. I haven't scanned the surface to see whether it is ore here. That's a flaw. Insufficient. It says, yeah, we need at least 2.5% with this drill. So we need to pick a better spot. But in theory, we could get the ore in, and that's 2 kilograms worth. So that's what they were specified to do. All right, well, let's test test, blah, blah, test the next thing. In, I mean, there's no more ignitions on here, so it shouldn't complicate matters. So we decouple, ignite, RCS on. Let's actually activate the RCS first. Okay. Right, and um, what we want is uh, surface relative. Just go heading 90, pitch 90 for now. Okay, and... Barrel up and go. Oh, 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 oh. Come on. All right. Well, we did that part. That was a little bit awkward, but it's doable. Uh, where, where's our other thing? 
Okay, we need to maybe go the other way. I put some gimbling on these. En oh, that flume needs to be fixed too. Uh, put some gimbling on these engines. I don't know if they'll have it. Probably the Ascent one wouldn't. So it's just probably just RCS that would handle that, but I don't know for sure. In terms of actually making a rendezvous, it's gonna be complicated without more than one ignition here. Or better timing. We decided to launch up exactly, and I don't think we have enough Delta V anyway. We just launched up exactly after we landed. That's not how they would do it. And maybe with the orbital module we can do the rest. Let's see. Oh, I should check whether it can recharge with its little solar panels. Okay, it is recharging with that panel facing the sun. Alright, so that's good enough there. Okay, I think eventually this would allow the little ascent module to catch up with us. And we should meet around on this side. Which is weird, but it'll be okay. Um, and might even be in daylight. So... 109.3 meter per second burn with RCS. Okay, I'll take that 5 kilometers. 26 meter per second relative speed. Okay, matching velocities. I don't think I put forward facing thrusters on this because I expected the ascent module to be doing the docking. We'll see if it has enough propellants. We'll try to do as much as possible with the orbital module first, though. If the docking works. That's a whole other business. That is basically what I'm interested in testing. Rendezvous is rendezvous. It's not a big deal. I mean, well, the way they're doing it is a big deal. Automated rendezvous around the moon is a big deal. The way I'm doing it is not a big deal. Okay, so it's on kill rotation, pointing at the target, 2 meters per second, and we're controlling from here. So that the orientation is as good as we can have it. Over here, that is the target. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, it's too fidgety. It's going to use too much propellant like that. Let me tone that down. Oh, God. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 Okay. <laughs> hmm. That's not doing a great job of holding things steady. Oh, translational thrusters don't seem to be working. Oh, we're out of propellant. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, oh, nuts. Uh, yeah, the thrusters on here are too powerful, I think. Even with when I uh, set it to... And now it's rolling. I can't control it, and it's not going to be possible to dock from the other side with it. Oh, so close. Yeah, they haven't docked yet. As, the as of the recording of this video, they lifted off of the surface, but haven't docked. Let's... See if it goes better for them than this. This was, this was awkward though for numerous reasons. So obviously I have things to fix. But uh, again, the reason I'm making a video is because maybe you guys know some numbers that I don't. So uh, if you do, uh, don't no guesses, okay? I mean, uh, uh, I, I can speculate uh, with the best of them. It's just the question of getting real numbers, if that's possible. So yeah, anyway, further refinements may occur and uh, we will see what happens. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.